Team Sky launched in 2009 as the poster boy for clean cycling, accepting the mantle of dragging the sport out of the doping gutter and proving the biggest races could be won without crossing the line into using banned drugs. But where that line actually lies is now under more scrutiny than ever before, with the disclosures from the suspected Russian hackers over the Therapeutic Use Exemptions, or TUEs, obtained for its former star rider, Sir Bradley Wiggins, and whether these have strayed into the so-called grey area between clean and doping. From Sky Pro Cycling, your Tour of Britain winner, Sir Bradley Wiggins! An asthma and allergy sufferer, the stolen data revealed Wiggins was given permission to inject the banned drug Triamcinolone, a powerful corticosteroid, just days ahead of three major races, including the 2012 edition of the Tour de France, which he won, becoming the first Briton ever to do so. The story has polarised the sport. This is, after all, stolen data containing the medical records of our greatest ever Olympian. Data which shows that neither he nor Team Sky have broken any rules. They've followed the cycling authorities' procedures to the letter. So why is this even being discussed? Well, it's because there are those who believe that this was unethical, that it doesn't smell right. And now, figures intimate with the world of cycling and the fight against performance-enhancing drugs, including Sir Bradley Wiggins' former teen doctor, have told Newsnight that they fear something is amiss. 2009 was Wiggins' breakthrough year in road racing, riding for the Garmin Slipstream team. Dr Prentice Stephen can't comment on Sir Bradley Wiggins' private medical records, but he did say this to us. I was surprised to see that, that there were TUEs documented for intramuscular triamcinolone um, just before three major events, two tours to France and one Giro d'Italia. You do have to think it's kind of coincidental that um, a big dose of intramuscular long-acting corticosteroid would be needed um, at that time of year, at that exact time before the most important race of the, of the season. The rules for obtaining TUE stipulate these conditions. The banned drug can only be used to treat an acute or chronic medical condition. That it's highly unlikely to produce any additional enhancement of performance. And that there's no reasonable therapeutic alternative. So what of the first? The interpretation of acute or chronic is subjective, but some of those who treat these conditions in athletes say that this isn't the course of action they'd expect to see. Dr John Dickinson has worked with more than 1,000 athletes with respiratory problems. You're not being controlled with your normal inhaler inhalers, then that's t that sort of medication is typically reserved for individuals who are in a very severe asthma, asthma response and are in need of emergency care, which would suggest that that particular individual is maybe not fit and well to, to compete in an elite race at that, at that point in time. So what of condition two, that the TUE must be highly unlikely to produce any additional enhancement of performance? Some experts say corticosteroids don't, but others, including former pro cyclists, insist they do. I've come to Denmark to meet one man who should know. Michael Rasmussen had been just four stages away from winning the Tour de France in 2007 when he was thrown out of the race for avoiding doping controls. He later blew the whistle on his own doping and the culture within the sport at that time. Is there any doubt in your mind that corticosteroids are a, a potent performance enhancing drug? There's no doubt in my mind that uh, the corticosteroids um, is very, very strongly performance enhancing. So what sort of benefits would corticosteroids give a, a rider? Well, um, it would postpone the um, sensation of fatigue, uh, increase your recovery speed, and um, most importantly, um, quite easily, um, I would maybe drop uh, one or two kilos which is very important when you want to climb mountains fast. It would help you burn fat? Yeah, yeah. It would uh, threat the body from 
from all excess fat uh, in a quite short period of time. And you actually watch this happening to, to your own body with it, this drug? It's, yeah, it's, it's a very fast and very effective drug in that sense. So what of the stipulation that there should be no reasonable therapeutic alternative? For severe asthma and allergy attacks, the people we spoke to agree triamcimolone will certainly do the job. But that doesn't make it necessarily the right drug for the job. I mean, I, I, I've never been myself involved with an athlete that's need, needed to go that, that far in terms of uh, sort of treatment for, for an asthmatic condition. We t really concentrate on working with our athletes to make sure that when we know they're asthmatic, we make sure they're on the optimal inhaler therapy so that they never need to, 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 go, that, to go to that level of needing to go above um, or into the TUE world, really. Had Wiggins needed triamcinolone when he was with his former team Garmin, he would have been deemed too ill to race the Tour, in which he finished fourth. Garmin and almost half of the rest of the pro peloton broke away and formed a group called the Movement for Credible Cycling, whose members were bound by stricter rules around racing on corticosteroid TUEs. Team Sky never joined. I just don't know, I wasn't there to see uh, what Bradley's condition was, um, but many of us would say that if you're in bad enough shape to need medically to resort to high-powered corticosteroids, you just probably shouldn't be racing at all, and, and that's that's the, really the position of the MPCC. Only Sir Bradley Wiggins and his Team Sky doctors know the full details of his medical conditions. What we do know is he had a TUE for a standard inhaler in 2009, which you no longer need an exemption for. And it was in that year Wiggins made his breakthrough, finishing fourth in the Tour de France, without a corticosteroid TUE. According to the TUE form in 2011, a nasal endoscopy was performed with Team Sky doctors suggesting a more serious intervention was required to treat Sir Bradley's allergies. However, Sir Bradley continued to race in the years following his final TUE in 2013 in high pollen areas, albeit in shorter and lesser profile races. In 2012, Sir Bradley published a 300-page autobiography and there is no mention of asthma or allergies, but he does speak about how healthy he had been in 2012, suffering only from one or two minor colds. The convicted doper Michael Rasmussen says the pattern of Sir Bradley's TUE use looks familiar. Just looking at, the, looking at the drugs and looking at the dates of the injections, um, it looked very much like something that could have happened 10 years ago when, when I was writing. If you look solely at, at the pattern of the, the TUEs uh, of Bradley Wiggins, then you would say that uh, this looks very suspicious. Um, it's something that that a rider would do if he wants to perform well in a, in a grand tour. Something that I would do, something that I did. I would say certainly now in retrospect, it's, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look right um, from a health or sporting perspectives. The process around the granting of TUEs is now under question. Each application is submitted by a team doctor. In Wiggins case, it's understood that was Dr. Richard Freeman, now head doctor at British Cycling. The application is then supposed to be assessed by three independent medical experts with the relevant sporting authority, in this case, the UCI, before being authorised. I would say, you know, Bradley's probably at the bottom of the list to be held personally responsible. I, I think his doctor and his team, you know, to make the decision to apply for that TUE is, is questionable. And then I think for the International Cycling Union or UK Cycling or, or World Anti-Doping Agency to sign off on that um, application, all things considered, I think um, really that's, that's the end point where um, the TUE committee should have looked at that and said, no, this is not acceptable, so we're not going to approve it. UCI told Newsnight it had a robust TUE policy. This is a story that seems to be painted in shades of grey, and even then we don't have the full picture.
but at least in the eyes of one former cheat, there remains a clear line between right and wrong. Well, a lot of writers, they feel that they are playing by the rules. Um, but I think, you know, once you actually make that decision to get a certificate for the wrong reasons, then, then you're crossing the line. Sir Bradley's representatives did not respond to questions from Newsnight, but previously said in a statement. There's nothing new here. Everyone knows Brad suffers from asthma. His medical treatment is British Cycling and International Cycling Union approved. And like all Team GB athletes, he follows WADA regulations to the letter. Team Sky told us... TUEs for Team Sky riders have been granted by the appropriate authorities and in complete accordance with the rules. Team Sky's approach to anti-doping and our commitment to clean competition are well known. Sir Bradley and his team insist nothing has been done that is wrong. But for some, it's a situation with echoes of a cycling past that was hoped had disappeared for good and a situation which some believe needs all of its facts disclosed.